All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Discovering Multifamily Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Scandariata with Red Knight Properties. Uh, thanks for listening to the show today. We're very excited to bring you episode 69. And we have a special guest with us, uh, Adrian Pinozo. And um, Adrian was actually a police, uh, was yeah. in the police force. Uh, he completed 21 years and he actually was able to retire early from a lot of the choices he made in particularly real estate investments. And he's now a full-time real estate investor and entrepreneur. Uh, he actually built his portfolio within less than a decade. He's got 50 plus investment properties, uh, which equates to about 200 units and plus units. And um, he focuses um, on joint venture uh, partnerships. Uh, Cause there's a lot of differences between joint venture partnerships and syndications that we'll get into a little bit on the show. And uh, he's, his company is called Executive Properties. So he actually uh, property manages his, his properties as well, as well as uh, construction management. And um, he also, you know, like I said, the joint venture partnerships is his focus. And uh, we're happy to have him on the show. Thanks for coming on, Adrian. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Anthony. Sure. Uh, so can you kind of describe your experience in the forest and, and like, why did you choose real estate? I mean, police... Policing to me is a lot more exciting than, you know, buying properties. So how, why did you make your, your decision? Yeah. So um, 10 years ago, essentially when I bought my first investment property, it all started with, um, I was going to renew the mortgage on my principal residence. And at the time, while I was a police officer, um, the mortgage broker I was working with kind of brought to light, it's like Adrian, you have, you know, all this equity in your home, your principal residence, what are you doing with that? And I didn't really know back then what equity was or what I could do with that money and so on and so forth. So kind of dove into that a bit and he's like, why don't you think of buying rental properties? And the light bulb went off. Essentially, we started with um, a home equity line of credit uh, and I want to say it was about $200,000 line of credit. We didn't have, I say we, my wife and I, we didn't have, um, you know, a substantial savings or really didn't have a lot of money in the bank, but we had this equity in our home. So we decided to, uh, go down that road, um, got our home reappraised, got that home equity line of credit and, uh, use that essentially again, starting 10 years ago to, um, buy our first couple of rental properties. So while I was a police officer, my thought process was, you know, I'm going to do my 30 years on the force. And then when I retire, I want maybe one or two properties to subsidize my pension. And so I can still live the same lifestyle I'm living now with a full police salary. Um, so we uh, fast forward, we get the home equity line of credit. And then ultimately we, uh, buy our first, I want to say four rental properties um, using that home equity line, uh, essentially. All of our rentals, um, we like to focus on the city of Hamilton, where we find um, very, very, very good return um, ROI on our money. Um, so buy our first four properties. I'm still a police officer. Um, I'm juggling you know, my properties being a full-time police officer, a dad, a husband, and, and all the nine yards, those went really well and, and um, uh, became very lucrative. Uh, great cash flow uh, produced from each one of those properties. And then ultimately, um, back in 2017, we um, decided, again, still on, still on the job, decided to start joint venturing. Now that we've been in the business for three, four years, we thought, you know what, we have some experience. We have the team behind us. We can start to um, uh, work with other investors who lack the expertise or lack the team or lack the knowledge. So we started a joint venture back then and things really took off in 2017 when we began joint venturing with other like-minded investors. Um, and then since then, um, essentially, uh, we've, we've excelled our portfolio, um, to now we own 54 
multifamily homes, again, equivalent to over 200 units that we own in, in, in a joint venture partnerships with other uh, investors. So my cash flow from my properties ultimately enabled me to retire early from policing. So I left, I retired after 21 years at the age of 40, I'm 46 now. So at the age of 43 years ago, um, fast forward, uh, I then became a, a full-time um, investor after I left the police department and continued to uh, be involved in different projects, different joint ventures um, throughout the last several years as well. So yeah, ultimately it's been a really good run. Um, again, the choices I made allowed me to walk away from that career um, and a career I loved. I, I loved being a police officer, something I always wanted to do, but obviously it was time, you know, it was time to, what's that saying, live life on your own terms, so to speak. It was time to uh, hang up the gun belt and essentially um, live life on my own terms is essentially what I'm doing today. That's great. So a few questions. Uh, awesome story. Um, you mentioned Hamilton. What state is that in? So we're in Ontario. Oh, Ontario. Canada. Okay. Yep. So you're in Canada. Okay. Yep. That's great. So when you're, you're talking about 200 units between 54 properties, are you mostly buying two to four units at a time? Yeah. So our niche is usually triplexes, fourplexes, um, six unit buildings, 12 unit buildings, all, again, obviously all multifamily homes. And we're negotiating, you know, deals where it's, it's typically one, one deal with one joint venture partner. And then, you know, we may do three deals a month. We may do two deals a month with different uh, joint venture partners that uh, want to get involved with our company and essentially replicate the kind of returns we're getting um, for our investors. Got it. So let's, let's talk about that. So what specific returns, return criteria are you looking for um, on these multifamily? Are you really looking at cash flow, cash on cash return, um, or are there a lot of other metrics that you're looking at? And what does, um, on a price per door perspective in, in Canada, I know things are high priced over there. So I guess, why do you stick to that market? Um, yeah, fair enough. Um, so we really honed our skills um, with, with respect to the buy, renovate, refinance and rent strategy. So the Burr strategy, um, we've, we've really perfected that strategy in our market center and our goals and our reputation really rely on infinite return on your money. So what does that mean? Well, in incorporating the buy rental refinance strategy, our goal and our reputation is to extract all of the capital we put into that project. So our down payment, our renovation costs, our holding costs, so on and so forth. Our reputation is to get that all back and give that money back to the joint venture partner. And then above and beyond that, we have approximately, let's say a four plus, uh, four units self-contained with no money in on the deal at the end of the refi. We still have approximately $1,200 a month positive cash flow. Obviously we have debt pay down from our tenants, passive appreciation. Our market centers typically appreciating 10 to 12% per annum. So all these things are happening in the background. And again, with no capital in on the deal, after we refinance. So our expertise really rely on knowing the market, knowing comparables. And, you know, for example, if we buy this acquisition for 500,000, we put in a hundred thousand in rentals, we're really good at forecasting the after repair value of that property in order to extract the capital that we injected in it. Got it. And how is that typically financed? So when you're doing those two to fours, is there a lot of hard money loans or are you going in with your joint venture partner all cash? How does, how does that typically work? And also just to follow up, um, a lot of my listeners understand what a syndication is. So if you could kind of explain the differences between the two, 
syndication versus a joint venture? Yeah, so really, if you know what syndication means, the biggest difference with the joint venture is, let's say we're partnering with Anthony and Anthony wants to get involved with our company. Anthony's bringing the capital to the table. So for example, Anthony brings 200 grand to the table. Um, there's no other partners involved other than Anthony and I, as opposed to a syndicate, there's obviously a lot more people involved in, in raising that capital and injecting, bringing their money to the table. So for this example, with the, with the JV, it's Anthony and I, Anthony's bringing the capital to the table. Um, we're performing all the work right from finding the right property to the analysis, to the renovation of that property, and then facilitating the refinance. And then ultimately, Anthony gets all his capital back at the refinance, and then we own that property 50-50. Just Anthony and I, or Anthony and our company, own that property 50-50. Great, and how long does that refinance event typically take for you on an average? Give or take, I would say uh, we've turned them around as quickly as six months and they've gone as long as eight months. So it really just depends on the scope of the work with respect to the rentals. Um, is this, you know, is this an eight month rental? Is this a five month rental, six month rental? But somewhere, you know, safely say between six and eight months, um, we're turning these projects around. That's great. So can you talk about the deal sizes a little bit more? And you mentioned 500 grand, is that your average? I say our average is between five and 600 on the purchase and our average renovations. Um, again, we're a lot of times we're going to the studs depending on, you know, how distressed the property is. But, um, I'd say on average, our rentals are about 150, 200,000. So all in all, you know, we're looking for a capital injection of, um, again, when we buy something at 500 though, here in Ontario, we we have to put 20% down, um, on a conventional mortgage because the bank gives us 80% loan to value. So we would, you know, for example, on a $500,000 purchase, that's obviously 20% is $100,000 down payment. Then we have the, let's say 200,000 in rentals. So we're into this, we're looking for a capital partner for 300,000. Got it. And what type of leverage do you put on after the reno is complete and the business plan is executed? It's not 80%, is it? It's back at 80, yeah. It's back at 80, okay. Can yep. you talk a little bit about that a little more in terms of, um, you know, with the two to four families, when people are acquiring them, at least in the United States, the financing that you can get is mostly through Fannie, Freddie, et cetera. And it's all recourse, meaning that you have full obligation to pay the mortgage if anybody defaults. So how does that work with the joint venture partnership? Yeah, so 80% loan to value on the refinance is very standard here in Ontario, Canada. Um, with respect to the default or mortgage payments, yes, the property technically is under the joint venture partner's name. So let's say again, Anthony, you, you would be securing the loan and the property would be under your name. But in the background, we have what we call a trust agreement that stipulates, you know, even though Anthony's on title on this particular mortgage, um, Adrian is responsible for 50% of that mortgage. So 50% of the bills, 50% of the carrying costs, essentially I'm equally responsible for, for that debt. Um, so I, our trust agreement protects you as far as, you know, I can't disappear in the middle of the night and protects us as far as you can't sell the property under our nose in the middle of the night, because again, there's, there's the legal document that covers that off. Got it. Okay. And um, so are you, is there enough inventory to go around in, in Hamilton or do you, is it the greater Ontario area that you're evaluating? No, there's, there's very, there's, Quite a bit of inventory actually it's it's actually a very very good market center to to be in um no problems with inventory at all and how do you find your deals yeah we have an inside sales team so obviously deals that pop on market like everybody else finds them but we also have an inside sales team that cold calls 
much of the day door knocking, you know, old school, old fashioned door knocking, believe it or not, it still works. Um, to, we use those techniques obviously to attract or to, to look up off market deals. That's great. And are you typically acquiring vacant prop two to fours? Both. Or? Both. Yeah. We, depending on the deal, if, if it's a great deal, we'll assume the tenants. Um, if the price is right, or ultimately, you know, we do, we do stumble upon the opportunity to take part when they're, they're already vacant. So we'll do both deals. It really, like every investor, it just comes down to the numbers. Talk to us about your property management, your construction management, and you mentioned your sales side already. Can you talk to us about how everything's integrated? Yeah, so we, <clears throat> I guess the light bulb went off, having all these units and, and, and whatnot. The, the, the light bulb went off and we decided to start our own property management company, really to focus on, you know, our joint venture properties um, and our clients properties that um, we can have under management because most of our, most of our joint venture partners and clients are professionals where, you know, they don't want the calls from the tenants. They don't want to go deal with the, the leaky tap or all this stuff. So we thought, you know what, we're what we want to deliver is a, a hands-free, hassle-free real estate investment. So we started that company Obviously now we have, um, we've grown. So we have 24 seven coverage. We have our own in-house maintenance department that will respond to, you know, the leaky taps or what, whatever service call needs to happen. Um, and again, just full scale service. Um, so that investor can continue on doing what he does every day, goes to his job, takes his kids to swimming, hockey, this, that, and doesn't have to worry about what's happening we deal with it all. And that was the same concept with the construction company. We're doing uh, probably, I'd say on average, 24 buy rental refinances a year. So that's 24 J joint venture deals a year, for example. And in doing all these renovations, again, peace of mind, we wanted to be able to, we didn't want to go on Kijiji and have to hire these fly by night contractors where you know, everybody's got a bad story about a general contractor for one reason or another. So we wanted to really corner that and offer again to our clients, hey, this is another avenue where we have it controlled. There are people, our company, our trades, and, and we can really deliver that, the product that we're telling them we're going to deliver and not relying on somebody from Kijiji to show up when and, when and if he wants to show up. So we kind of cornered all those markets, just peace of mind to our investors that we have this all under one roof, like a Costco, right? Everything's under one roof, right from, you know, we're realtors, we're investors, we have the property management, we have the construction, it's all ready to go on a nice, you know, tight bow under our roof. That's great. And it's, it's very important to do that, especially, you know, if you're overseeing everything and we want to make sure everything's going smoothly instead of relying on outside forces. Uh, we, we do that as well. So Adrian, can you tell us how we can find you and, you know, people want to take a look at a couple of your deals, how they can get on, do you have a list or? Yeah, absolutely. So I can be reached. I think the easiest, easiest way is just shoot me an email at um, executive properties, I E S um, at rogers.com is our preferred email address. Shoot me an email. Um, then we can definitely set up a call or we can send you some, some, um, some material on our company and, and the kind of most recent projects we've been involved in and how those numbers played out and the kind of returns we're getting on our investments. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to, to receiving a few of those and uh, you know, hope you guys check out Adrian's platform as well. It's pretty, pretty sophisticated. And I want to thank you again for coming on the show, Adrian. Really yeah, appreciate it. Uh, again, this is the Discovering Multifamily Podcast, episode 69. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, if you want to reach out to uh, me to learn more about Adrian, um, our website, my company's Red Knight Properties, you want to learn a little bit more about us too, uh, you can find us on, on there. And make sure to give us a uh, review on iTunes if, if, you, if you liked it, if you didn't like it and uh, an honest uh, star rating as well. 
So I appreciate that. And Adrian, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks again, Anthony. All right.